This video is covering human nutrition and goes into the specifics of the digestive system. It's geared loosely towards the Irish leaving their course and contains the main points only. Nutrition is all about the way in which organisms obtain and use their food. Therefore, food is of huge significance. It's necessary for fueling metabolism and it's also essential for the provision of raw materials necessary to ensure continuity of life. So for food to be usable, it needs to be physically and chemically broken down into smaller, more soluble subunits, so smaller particles able to pass into the blood. Physical digestion means physically breaking up the food into smaller particles. This happens in your mouth when your teeth crush and grind the food. It also happens in your stomach as it's a muscular bag and when it contracts, its contents are churned. So what is meant by chemical digestion? Well, it mostly involves the action of enzymes acting upon the food to further break it down. And one enzyme in particular, pepsin, found in the stomach, needs hydrochloric acid for activation. Nutrition follows a very ordered sequence of events, the first of which is ingestion. This is physically taking in the food. Then digestion, the physical and chemical breakdown of that food into smaller, more soluble subunits. Absorption then when these subunits pass into the blood and then egestion which is the removal of that undigested unabsorbed food material through the anus. This whole sequence of events happens in the alimentary canal, another name for the digestive system. It basically begins at the mouth and ends with the anus and remember buccal cavity is another way of referring to the mouth. This is a very detailed chapter on your course, so make sure that you can talk about how carbohydrates, proteins and lipids are digested. Make sure also you can talk about the reabsorption of water and the importance of cellulose in the diet. And also, finally, make sure that you can give an account of vitamins B and K and the symbiotic bacteria that you encounter in the colon. So let's go through the sequence of events involved in nutrition. Food enters the alimentary canal by entering into the mouth. Here it is immediately physically broken up using the teeth and then chemically acted upon by amylase, which is secreted by the salivary glands, and it's going to convert starch to maltose. Amylase likes to work at a pH of approximately 7. The ground up food, which is now a ball or a bolus, is swallowed and passes down the esophagus. Here, waves of peristalsis shunt the food onwards. All the time, the amylase is acting upon the starch. The bolus of food eventually makes it to the stomach where the pH is very low, so it's a very acidic environment and amylase is denatured here. Chemical digestion takes place in the stomach. Here, cells lining the stomach produce gastric juice. This contains hydrochloric acid and a protease, an enzyme that breaks down proteins. The hydrochloric acid is very important. It lowers the pH of the stomach to around 2 and it kills bacteria. The low pH is very important. Hydrochloric acid is essential for activating protease, the enzyme that breaks down proteins, because the protease is actually secreted in an inactive form called pepsinogen and it's only when it mixes with the hydrochloric acid in the lumen of the stomach that it's converted to the active form pepsin. Pepsin, this protease that's found in the stomach, it breaks down proteins into smaller polypeptides, into smaller protein chains. In addition to all the chemical digestion taking place in the stomach is physical digestion as the contents are churned and mixed thoroughly. It's very important that the stomach has some protection against the acid and the protease. So cells lining the stomach produce mucus and this mucus is slightly alkaline and this neutralizes the hydrochloric acid. It also creates a physical barrier. It's also important to remember that the protease enzyme, that pepsin, is secreted in an inactive form and it's not until it's in the lumen of the stomach away from the water of the stomach and mixing with the hydrochloric acid that it becomes converted to active pepsin. Eventually it's time to leave the stomach and the substance that is now leaving the stomach and entering the small intestine is highly acidic and it's known as chyme. The acidic chyme is then acted upon by secretions from two glands, secretions from the liver and the pancreas. The pancreas plays a hugely important role in digestion. It secretes many enzymes, pancreatic enzymes, for example, pancreatic amylase that acts upon starch, pancreatic proteases which act on proteins, and pancreatic lipases which break down lipids. These are part of the pancreatic juice, which also contains sodium bicarbonate, which is really important for neutralizing the acidic chyme. And because the pancreas is secreting those enzymes into a tube known as the pancreatic duct, 
This is an example of the exocrine function of that gland. Make sure that you're making the connection that the enzymes are secreted by the pancreas, but they act in the small intestine, the upper part of the small intestine known as the duodenum. The liver is another important gland. It produces bile. Bile is then sent to the gallbladder where it's stored and concentrated. It's important to note that bile does not contain any enzymes. It contains salts. And the purpose of bile is to emulsify fats, to basically turn large droplets of fats into many smaller droplets. And this is important for breaking down fats with enzymes. It's important that you can state the position of the liver in relation to the stomach. This was a previous exam question. So it is above the stomach, behind the stomach or to the right of the stomach were all of the answers that were accepted. So when the acidic chyme left the stomach, it immediately entered the small intestine, the upper section of which is known as the duodenum. And it's here that most digestion takes place. If you were to look inside the small intestine, it would have this velvet-like appearance, and this is because of the presence of these little finger-like projections known as villi. It's a good idea to become familiar with the structure of the small intestine. Notice the muscle layer and those villi. In between the villi, in the walls of the small intestine, glands secrete intestinal juices, which neutralize chyme, and also cells lining the villi, those epithelial cells, produce enzymes. Enzymes such as amylases to complete carbohydrate digestion and proteases that will complete protein digestion. We've already stated that most digestion takes place in the upper portion of the small intestine and the pH is very important because of all of that enzyme action. The pH of the small intestine is slightly alkaline. We say slightly above 7 but less than 9. Digestion is now complete and it's mostly because of the enzyme action of those enzymes secreted by the pancreas that acted in the duodenum and also by those enzymes secreted by the duodenal wall. The carbohydrates have now been broken down to monosaccharides, the lipids to fatty acids and glycerol and the proteins to amino acids. It's really important also not to forget the role of peristalsis, that muscular contraction of the intestinal walls in moving the food onwards through the digestive system. And the small intestine, as we've seen before, is really well adapted for this purpose. So in this lower section of the small intestine known as the ileum, this is where absorption is going to take place. All of those monosaccharides, the amino acids and the fatty acids and glycerol will now leave the small intestine. And in the case of the amino acids and the monosaccharides, they'll pass into the bloodstream. And in the case of the fatty acids and glycerol, they will pass into the lymphatic system first. Digestion is now fully complete and the products of digestion leave the small intestine and are absorbed. So they do this by passing through the wall of each individual villus. This is mostly by diffusion, but in some cases active transport does play a role, but always say diffusion. In the case of the monosaccharides and the amino acids, they enter the blood vessels at the centre of each villus. In the case of products of fat digestion, fatty acids and glycerol enter the lacteals at the centre of each villus and these are part of the lymphatic system. Eventually, they will be returned to the blood of the subclavian vein. The small intestine is really well adapted to its role of absorption because it's very long, it has many infoldings and these infoldings are covered in villi and villi are in turn covered in microvilli and this all increases the surface area for the absorption of those products of digestion. It's important also to mention the particular features of the villus. Well, it's only one cell thick, so that means it's very thin walled and this facilitates rapid diffusion. It has microvilli on its surface and this further increases the surface area for the absorption of those nutrients. The presence of those blood capillaries is also a very important feature and also the lacteal. So those blood capillaries that we saw at the center of the villus, they will eventually link up with the hepatic portal vein. And it's here that the nutrients, particularly the monosaccharides and the amino acids, will be delivered to the liver. The hepatic portal vein is an important blood pathway because it's an example of a portal system. It's a blood pathway that begins with and ends with capillaries. I would recommend that you become familiar with this diagram and remember there are variations on it, but it's most important that you know the particular blood vessels leading into and out of the liver and the direction of the blood flow. Anything that's undigested now leaves the small intestine and enters into the large intestine, the first portion of which is known as the cecum. When you enter into the colon, it's here that water is reabsorbed and that's mostly what happens in the colon.
The colon is home to many bacteria, symbiotic bacteria, which are those bacteria living on or in another organism of a different species, and the relationship usually involves benefit. For example, bacteria gain food and a habitat, a place to live in our colon, and in return we gain vitamins B and K, and those numbers of pathogenic or disease-causing bacteria are controlled. The final stage in the whole process is egestion, where undigested, unabsorbed material and bacteria enter the rectum and are expelled through the anus. So that was digestion, a very long, detailed chapter, and this is a list of the basics you must know. As always, this video was made with icons using the Noun Project. I'm a pro member, but I still want to recognise and credit all of the artists. And you know yourself that these videos are not meant to replace your textbook, nor are they ever meant to replace your teacher's guidance. Doing past papers and checking the marking scheme is essential. The very best of luck.